Coming up on Kentucky Outlook, in an effort to attract the growing number of senior citizens in the U.S., cities across the United States are getting creative with marketing to the 55-plus crowd. For cities lucky enough to have a university or a college campus in their towns, they're using the education card, and it's proving to be an asset. For the Bowling Green area, a vibrant university gerontology department, a collaborative city-county government, and it makes for a nice mix. We're going to talk about that initiative coming up next on Kentucky Outlook. In the last decade, the World Health Organization has seen the need to make cities more vibrant for the 55-plus crowd. We're going to talk about that as we welcome to the program Dana Burr-Bradley, who is with WKU's Gerontology Department. Thank you so much for being Thank here. You. Pleasure. In addition, Barbara Johnston joins us, and she, she spent a different life and one career and is now focusing her concentration on the age-friendly city. Thanks for being here, Barbara. Thank you. When we talk about a senior, it's not your grandma or your grandpa's senior. <laughs> what are we looking at when we, you know, if you had to profile a senior, what, what would they look like? Us. They look like <laughs> us. I mean, we're all aging as a society in our community, indeed in Warren County. And uh, we know that overall people who are aging tend to be, there are more women. Um, but, you know, it, it's in it, terms of chronological age, yeah, 50s, 60s, and the fastest growing part of that are people over the age of 85. Fastest growing part, people over 85. 85 indeed. What's that tell you? We're living longer. Mm -hmm. We are. And so often people think that the day you retire, you move into a nursing home. They forget that you have 20 or 30 years of very active living in between the time <laughs> that you retire from your work, your profession, and the time that you may find that you do need additional help. That's a, a wonderful period of time to explore and find new things. I, I have this funny book here. Now there's Josephine Lohman, who was a WKU grad, who was inducted into the Hall of Distinguished Alumni at WKU several years ago. She wrote a book. She was a fitness expert and she was a writer, and it was called Why Grow Old. Okay, now this was circa 1971. And it's just hilarious. It's the bottom line is don't be age conscious. It ruins your fun. It ages you, <laughs> and it sets self-made limitations on your activities. Absolutely. So the bottom line is in 1971, you know, she was preaching this gospel about aging. In this year, 2014, you know, what are we looking at? What does aging look like? You say it looks like us. Okay. Well, what does that mean? So it means people who are often don't stop working. They may um, have a second, third at least a third, if not a fourth career, um, looking for employment or, you know, when they're, they're being paid to do things um, on a, a different, uh, for different reasons, because they really enjoy it. Looking for volunteer opportunities that are engaging um, and wanting to connect with their community on all different levels. And, you know, and, and then there are issues that sometimes the money's not there, the resources or the health resources are poor. Um, and that's one of those challenges about growing old that we try to balance those increased years with potentially less resources to make those years really super. So we talked about the fact that the World Health Organization saw this as a real need and instituted something called the Age-Friendly City. So it took this big organization for cities and counties and municipalities to realize, guess what? We've got this cohort of aging individuals that maybe we should, maybe we should take a look at. So you, you jumped on this bandwagon right away, didn't you? We were really fortunate to have one of the leading consultants through the WHO, uh, Dr. Kelly Fitzgerald, who actually teaches um, in the gerontology program at a distance. She lives in Zurich, so distance technology makes that, makes that possible. And uh, the mayor, um, uh, Bruce Wilkerson, was particularly supportive, as was Dr. Gary Ransdell, our president, in setting forward kind of a collaborative plan of action. And so uh, two years ago, the city of Bowling Green entered into an agreement with WHO to become a member of this age-friendly cities and communities network. And that's really an agreement that says over five, six plus years, uh, the city agrees to really look at issues that affect 
um, people in communities in their neighborhoods, their social connections, their health, um, and uh, make some recommendations and some changes so that it becomes, and the city itself can become more age friendly for everyone. Yeah, not just not just, not just people seniors. who have that certain age, whatever that age whatever is. Whatever that age is. Right. Barbara, you told me, I hope you don't mind me saying this on camera, but you, you basically said you come from a, a, a time period <laughs> when you grew up. I mean, you, you were a hippie, is what you told me. Well, I mean, you we were say active, active in active. the 60s. Yes, so you were active in the 60s, and, and a lot of people who look at that decade realize that those were people who really wanted to be a part of things, who really wanted to make a difference. Who really wanted to make a difference. Mm -hmm. So when I reached a certain age, I looked around and said, you know, I'm the leading edge of a very large group of people. There are going to be many more coming behind me. And what can we do to make Bowling Green a delightful place in which to get a bit older? Just about that time, I heard about the program that Dana had launched with Age Friendly Cities and attended several of the gatherings where mm -hmm. older people came together to talk about Bowling Green and to talk about things they saw that they felt would be um, great things to have, improvements that could be made, and it was absolutely fascinating to hear the people in Bowling Green talking about this issue and getting excited about the possibility of making mm -hmm. some changes. When you look back to that time, and it was in 08 when all this uh, happened? So we started this t two years ago, and so um, it's really been a two-year initiative, and okay. last year we held a series of conversations across the city of Bowling Green that in uh, included people of all ages. And a lot of our students here at WKU were the facilitators of that, those conversations, and trying to get some priori a priority list about what, what could happen, um, what were some small steps that um, perhaps the university could help nudge along or volunteers to really make a difference in people's I lives. I have to ask, at these community conversations, I think the, the WHO initiative began in 08, but you're right, saying right. in the last two years here. it was mm -hmm. implemented here in Bowling Green, that um, these community conversations where you invite seniors and you say, come here, talk, how did that go? You know, because I, I, I'm sensing that you <laughs> either get a really great turnout or people are reluctant to be a part of that. So we, we use the best friend approach. Okay. So we would have, we, we asked people, would you like to host a conversation? In fact, we're still doing them. We haven't taken it off the table. But so the idea was that you, you might host a conversation with seven, eight, nine people that you, you know, you know, you know. Okay. In fact, Barbara hosted one in her sure own did. home. It was lovely. And uh, there were a lot of things that kind of came in that conversation, but the central question was, what kind of community do you want to live in? Do people, did they know the answer to that? You oh. know, that's the kind of thing you can't really do much about it unless you know what the problem is or what the issue is, but they were quick, yes. There was quick. one that came out very clearly, and that was there are wonderful things to do in Bowling Green, especially that sort of have a senior focus, but how do you find out about them? Unless you have a friend who happens to mention something, um, how do you sort of get in the loop? So it's the connectivity sort it, of it's thing. It's communication okay. and connectivity. And, and Dana uh, and several volunteers kind of mm -hmm. tackled that one head on and came up with some wonderful things. I had, May I had, show you? Of course. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah, yeah. So this was a show group, a, gr a group of, of older adult volunteers who met to kind of brainstorm. If the issue is feeling connected, um, people people knew they wanted to be better connected, but were feeling isolated and feeling as though no one really knew that they were in the community. So one way to overcome that is to just connect better. But if you don't know what's going on, you can't connect. You can't connect. And so this group uh, came up with a senior events calendar. And it looks just like this, and on the back side are really interesting information about how to connect with various groups, sort of things one needs to know in the Bowling Green region. And this comes out now monthly, and it is um, in this version. It's on WKU Center for Aging's website. 
It which is. incidentally, we'll put up a, a link to that at the oh, end of the show you. so you can mm -hmm. find out more information. And the, and the group kind of pilot tested it by handing it out at Kroger. And uh, we all know there's uh, on Wednesdays at Kroger. It's senior day. <laughs> it's senior day. Yes. It's very special day for seniors. And so they actually handed it out for free and, you know, got some feedback and, you know, did we, they did their market research on this and people liked the format. And it, this, but this paper calendar doesn't show everything. Okay. by any means. It's just sort of a snapshot of one point in time what's available. And uh, we thought that was a, a great source because it's you can print it and put it on your refrigerator, mm -hmm. right? Mail it, you know, share it with people. And then uh, the, what the committee wanted to do was really, again, draw focus about a lot of seniors who are active and vital and, and have a lot to do and want to do here in Bowling Green. And so they approached uh, Soki Magazine and uh, which, which is a free publication mm -hmm. that's found that's in the right. area. So, right, yeah. Yeah. Right. And now every month there is a column uh, that is directed just at seniors and written by seniors. In fact, I have one of the authors um, here <laughs> with me. And, uh, and it's funded by Home Instead uh, Care um, every month. And in that is also linked to the calendar. So the topics are, are, are you know, run the gamut. And what's one of the most recent ones? Well, liked. the one this month was on the fall prevention program that was held yesterday. And the one for October will be on another initiative that has, in a way, grown out of those conversations, mm -hmm. which is the WKU uh, Society for Lifelong Learning. Yes, which incidentally, we're going to be having a show on that coming up in the next couple mm -hmm. of weeks, which is very exciting. It's lifelong learning. It's learning opportunities for people. I mean, you can take up to 12 credit hours in the course of a year. This is a learning. Uh, totally non-credit situation. It's very much like a club for people who simply like to learn things or have always mm -hmm. wanted to know something and never had the opportunity. And we've been out in the community eliciting ideas, and we've, we've everything from, I would really like to learn music. I never had the chance. Give me a harmonica or a tutaphone. I don't care. I just want to Just let me music. come and learn how to read music and make music. To Great Decisions, which is a program the American Foreign Policy Association. Uh, sponsors on an annual basis, which really delves into world issues. So we are working hard on this project, and hopefully by spring 2015, uh, we will have the Lifelong Learning Institute. Courses will be on South Campus, excellent parking. And mm -hmm. from the response we've received in the community, I'd say there, that it's a, a very positive situation. And so. we're going to talk more about lifelong learning and age-friendly cities with Dana Burr Bradley and Barbara Johnston when Kentucky Albert continues. Stay with us. Kentucky Outlook continues. I'm your host, Barbara Deeb. Don't forget to check out our webpage at wkyupbs.org and check us out on Facebook. We're talking today about the 55 plus crowd and how the World Health Organization saw this cohort as a real area to grow. And that's exactly what's happening in Bowling Green and the surrounding area as we're looking at this city becoming a more age friendly city. Welcoming back to the program, we have Dr. Dana Burr Bradley, who's with WKU's gerontology department, and Barbara Johnston, who's with the Age Friendly Initiative. In addition, <laughs> lots of other things, both of you. But you know, before the break, we were talking about getting this cohort, this 55 plus group of individuals, to want to be involved. You know, you hear bits and pieces about how they don't feel connected, how do we connect them, and then there are others who don't want to be connected. I mean, how do you how do you corral this group? Well, one of the initiatives that the city of Bowling Green supported with funding from AARP Kentucky was the creation of a 50 over 50 citizens academy. Sometimes the best and most engaged citizens are those that are well educated, that have a sense of literally what does it mean to process payroll for the city of Bowling Green? How do you fix a pothole? Um, there's a golf course. What, what does it mean to do golf maintenance on that turf? Uh, so uh, there are a range of topics when it comes to running a city. And uh, two years ago, uh, we trained um, gosh, 26 uh, people over the age of 50 as citizen experts 
through this 50 over 50 Citizens Academy. Oh, that could Academy. be scary. <laughs> I'm a citizen <laughs> expert. Look out, right? And then last, uh, last March, we did another group, another cohort, and we're doing another cohort uh, this coming March, the uh, 19th through the... Uh, mm, something. Something <laughs> in, in March. Those details are on our website okay. um, as well. And uh, in fact, this, uh, later on today, uh, Barbara and I are going to reunion of these uh, the first two cohorts because we want to kind of keep them up to date. They enjoy seeing each other, and uh, they're going to be talking a little bit about what they want to do, uh, not only as a group, but individually in terms of this age-friendly um, city initiative. Well, and that's certainly a great tourism draw when you're, you know, you're targeting certain uh, demographics to be able to say we have a designation as an age-friendly city. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would think that that would certainly boost tourism numbers. Well, Bowling Green has been named repeatedly over the years as mm -hmm. one of the best places to live. And I think as we look at the, the, the things that make it an age-friendly city, um, it will I even attract more individuals right. to the area. Right, just this year Bowling Green was listed as one of the top 15 retirement destinations in the country. Top 15 Top retirement? 15 retirement mm -hmm. destinations. And, and so a lot of that you know, goes into it, including sort of the livability. And so one of the things that these, uh, these citizen experts are, are going to be doing, along with our WKU students, is doing neighborhood assessments like using a checklist about accessibility and is that neighborhood age friendly? What is it doing right? And what maybe could it do a little bit better? And it might be involved with some trimming of trees or maybe a sidewalk clearance issue or maybe there's, you know, someone notes that maybe a neighbor maybe needs a little help with some making their house a little more accessible or safe. And using that checklist, the neighborhood um, members themselves can can kind of do an assessment about again there's thumbs up and maybe some areas for improvement kind of like a neighborhood watch mm -hmm. almost yeah. you know like kind of assessing a as you go we we talked about the world health organization being behind this initiative this age friendly cities initiative and then we look at the global scene mm -hmm. of how different cultures react to their seniors, yes, to their elders. Very interesting. It is very interesting. And in Asia in particular, uh, especially the Japanese culture, is known to have a high respect, Chinese culture, for its senior citizens, for its elder. Now, what are they doing right and what are we doing that we could be doing differently to, to change that attitude? And it's almost behavior modification, actually. You know, I think it's it's also about attitudes, about being accepting and creating places where older adults feel comfortable. So another initiative that's come out of this is the Age Awareness, Age Friendly City Awareness Award that's been given two years in a row to a business uh, that has exhibited particularly um, high qualities of being kind of accessible and friendly to older adults. Uh, the first year it was um, Home Instead. Uh, senior care, and this past year it was Christian Care Communities here in Bowling Green, and and that's a, a group of volunteers kind of looks at some applications, and this award is done in, in August, and it's really a way of moving toward getting businesses to think about what is it in my restaurant or in my bank or in my doctor's office that helps create an environment both physical and attitudinal that's welcoming to people as they age. How do you, but how do you, that's a tough one. Attitudes? It's I mean, how one. do you yeah. change, yes. Mm -hmm. Suggestions? How do you, you do know, that? Uh, awards work wonderfully. <laughs> <laughs> Incentives, eh? Yeah. Is that, have, so you feel like that does make a you difference? You know, I think it, in other cities that have done this, particularly New York City, um, has led the way in this. And I think um, as our local businesses become to understand that older adults are a very vital um, contributor to the economy, uh, actually thinking through, you know, what's that lighting like? Um, if there's background music, you know, are you offering food choices? Are the table, I'm just picking on restaurants, but it could be anything. <laughs> um, you know, what's a plus, what's an maybe less desirable? Um, and sort of thinking through those things uh, might attract more people who are spending a lot of money to your business. We talked about that international scene, and I think something that you <laughs> brought up that was so intriguing was that in some cultures, uh, service care is given to the elderly by robots. That's what's happening in Japan. 
one of the largest companies in Japan is SoftBank, and they decided that they would develop a robot just for being there with an elderly person. Mm -hmm. And the robot has great big eyes, and the robot talks to you, and the robot can manipulate many things, rolls around on wheels, and is very reasonably priced. So as soon as they become available, being an early adopter type, I'm thinking it might be fun just to experiment to, to, with that mm -hmm. concept. But that is one approach. The Japanese are very serious, mm -hmm. very serious, um, about utilizing technology in assisting with the care of their aging population. I personally don't think that's quite as much fun as having a lifelong learning institute or our calendar, but... Sure. You know, and, and again, that's uh, supply and demand. They mm -hmm. just do not have enough young people Correct. to take care of. And Correct. that situation is going to mimic itself across the world yes. because of the mm -hmm. uh, amount of the aging baby boomers. Mm -hmm. So no ro robots for you? Well, yes, I'm going to, if I, if I can possibly figure out a way to do it. What are you going to call it? Its name is Pepper. Oh, Pepper. Okay. Ah, mm -hmm. right. Very good. I didn't name it. They did. But you would look at a robot, but you would prefer the the face-to-face. -face. Oh, of course. The robot yeah. would be simply like buying the iPhone 6. It would be an interesting um, new wrinkle in technology. It would be interesting to see how it works, what it does. Mm -hmm. um, and more countries may go to that. You give Man. me a nice segue into, you, you know, we talk about this tech-savvy world in which we live, and more seniors are certainly in that place mm -hmm. where we can get to them, you know, where we don't have to have snail mail or some mm -hmm. other way to get to them. They, they, they are hungry for more progressive ways of connecting. Mm -hmm. How do you address that? You know, I think at this point you, you try to do it all. And so that was one of the concerns with the, the calendar committee was a paper calendar was great, and it, but it couldn't hold all the information in a font size that people could read. And so moving toward connecting it to a newspaper that's free and accessible to a lot of people allowed that um, information to get in different hands. And then our third step was to put it um, in a a multi-purpose calendar on our website that's updated daily. So the calendar on the website has over a hundred different events in Bowling Green that um, that the committee felt you know was appropriate to put on that calendar. Because that's the next you know. question. What's on that cal calendar? <laughs> so don't you want to go look? Well, we take a look. We encourage you to take a look. look. But I'm I'm hopeful that it's uh, things that are just stimulating and exciting and fun for well, seniors. Well, many of them are. Some of them. Um, the committee actually went out into the community and visited a variety of locations uh, to talk with them about the kinds of things they offered. The Warren County Parks and Recreation Department has a wonderful senior center that they have built. It's brand new out at Ephraim White Park. They have everything from dances with live bands to bingo. Um, the Silver Sneakers Program which is an exercise program offered through Parks and Rec here in Bowling Green. Um, we try to put things like that, the dances, the, the exercise programs mm -hmm. on the calendar, but then we also mm -hmm. look out into the community and look for plays, musical events, um, special programs like the fall prevention program that we featured this month. Um, and make sure that those are included. We look at the medical center for the screening programs that mm -hmm. they make available. Free screening programs. Mm -hmm. You know, you, I'm still, I'm lost in the silver sneakers there somewhere because that begs the question, you know, the stereotype that one has, which feeds into the perception about seniors. Mm -hmm. You know, when you hear that term silver sneakers, well, yeah, that's kind of what comes to mind. How, how does that play into what you do, being, you know, having to work around that? You know, and I, I think working with our students on campus, who of course are all ages, but particularly our undergraduate students in the Honors College who inform a lot of the research that this center does. 
uh, they're constantly uh, come back to me and say, gee, I thought aging was about this, but it really is about <laughs> that. And a great example is, is attending a Silver Sneakers class where truly uh, a number of those participants can outkick and outrun and out anything that our students can do. They um, came down and tried. And, they, and our students will often go, you know. <laughs> and so the bottom line is open, broaden your horizons. Right. Broaden your horizons. Absolutely. Indeed. And go to the website. It's uh, wku.edu slash aging. We've been talking with Dr. Dana Burr Bradley of WKU's gerontology department and Barbara Johnston, who's with the Age Friendly Cities Initiative. That's going to wrap it up for this week's edition of Kentucky Outlook. Ladies, thanks for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll see you next time. Thanks.